You're looking live at the White House. President Biden in just a moment will be calling for bold investments in HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. The American Family Plan proposes a significant increase in the maximum Pell Grant for students who need the help the most. It will also help build a diverse teacher pipeline, which is very important. United Negro College Fund saying this plan is a major boost to institutions that educate and support students of color. And we are proud to be joined tonight by Dr. David Wilson, who is the president of Morgan State University down in Baltimore City that I know very well. And, and, and Dr. Wilson, thank you for being with us. This issue of funding HBCUs, I know it's near and dear to your heart because Maryland, you actually had to sue the state of Maryland because I used to teach at Bowie and the difference between the state schools, HBCUs versus the University of Maryland system was day and night for years. How important is this, this money that the president is promising for HBCUs? Well, uh, Dale, first of all, thanks for having me. Look, uh, this uh, money uh, that is included in the American Families Plan uh, that President Biden is going to talk about uh, later on this evening is crucial. Uh, it is so crucial for uh, the continual elevation of HBCUs. It is so crucial to begin to address uh, some of the legacies of inequitable funding uh, that has come to our institutions. Uh, and despite the fact uh, that we have never, ever enjoyed um, since our founding back in 1837 with uh, Cheney University outside of Philadelphia, the kind of investments that uh, have come to traditionally white institutions in this country. Uh, and so I really applaud uh, President Biden uh, for understanding that legacy of discrimination, that legacy of inequitable funding and is taking a bold step uh, to infuse HBCUs with some capital um, investments, uh, with uh, opportunities for our students, uh, many of whom are first-generation college-going students right. coming from limited resource families, uh, to stay in school with the $1,400 increase in the Pell Grant. Uh, okay. And so uh, as I look across the HBCU presidential world, we are very excited about what we are about to hear. Dr. Wilson, I'll point out, by the way, my mother went to Morgan, but that's a story for another day. The $45 billion that the best he's setting aside. The in the whole United States, so she went to a great place. <laughs> the $45 billion that we're talking about here, Washington sets it aside, but would you please tell our audience how difficult it is to access that money, even though it is set aside, the paperwork, the, the red tape, the headaches. Um, so in other words, there's a study that shows that a student that enters a college on day one the world will have changed even before he finishes his studies by the year year four of his education. So how long is it going to take for that money to actually hit the pipeline and change the lives of students? Well, you know, uh, we've had a little experience here uh, with the American Rescue Plan uh, that President Biden has uh, put in place. Uh, and so uh, the way that works, um, Dell, is that there's a drawdown system within the U.S. Department of Education uh, and I must admit, you know, it has not been uh, an arduous task for us to draw the money down uh, and to really help our students almost in the immediacy. Uh, and so uh, here, you know, we are hopeful uh, that um, uh, when this uh, American uh, Families Plan is passed, and we are hopeful that it will pass, uh, that immediately the way the money will come to HBCUs will be through systems that have already been in place uh, so we can make it work for our students and make it work for our institutions uh, as Dr. fast as we possibly can. We are seeing it now with athletics. We're seeing people bypass some of the major universities saying, I want to go to an HBCU. I want to go to a Howard. I want to go to a Morehouse. I want to go to Morgan. Are you now convinced that with this money coming into the pipeline that we will see the future Charles Drews of the world wanting to go back to HBCUs to study things like medicine and tech and, and all of the other uh, changing dynamics of, of the universe that we live in? Yes, I'm 100% convinced of that. Um, as a matter of fact, that has started already. Uh, and so um, it has started because we are uh, finally in a position where we can put in place unique high demand degree programs, uh, particularly in STEM areas and have some of the world-class computer science departments and nursing programs and uh, allied health programs and engineering programs. Uh, and I think the word is out now uh, that if you really want um, to come to an institution where you're going to get everything you need skill-wise, you're going to get everything that you need confidence-wise uh, to ensure that when you cross the stage from one of our institutions and you get your sheepskin, you will be prepared to dance on the world stage with anyone, anywhere, any place, anytime. 
and you will be in a position where you can get high paying jobs, close to wealth gap, and live a prosperous and happy life. And so we are seeing that here at Morgan and across the HBCU world. Adele, as a matter of fact, today, um, a young lady you know, who was you know, 4.0 uh, average, or one of the most stellar students in Seattle, Washington, uh, flew out here um, because this is the place where she wanted to go. And she had all these options all over the United States, but it was Morgan State University. Uh, and so I'm convinced that not only will we become more attractive for our star athletes, we are in a position now where the top performing black students in the country, if you want to go to an institution where your game, your academic game, is going to be elevated off the chart and you can leave and you can compete with anyone wherever they went to school, the HBCU's doors are open for you to enter. Morgan State University, proud home of the Barbara Walters, not the other one, the Barbara Walters. Dr. David Wilson, the president there, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. We will be right back. You're looking at the White House right now as we prepare for the president to address a joint session of Congress in 36 minutes. You're watching BNC. Our live coverage continues.